If you want to be able to create a document on your computer that holds text, maybe you want to create a journal or you want to print it off for one of your board meetings, you need a word processing program. In other words, it's a computer application used to compose, edit, format, and print text. And Windows 7 comes with two of them. It comes with Notepad and WordPad. First of all, let's go ahead and take a look at Notepad. Come down here, click on the Start button, click on All Programs, and then find your Accessories folder. Click on it to expand it. And there's Notepad. Click on it. It opens up. Your cursor's flashing. You can go ahead and start typing in text. And then when you're done, save it. But notice up here in the menu bar, you don't get too many options. So Notepad is a really dummy-down version of a word processing program. You get text, you can do some formatting, but you can't do things like add pictures to your document. Let me go ahead and close out without saving. Then come down here, click on the Start button, click on All Programs, and again we're going to the Accessories folder, click on it to expand it, down below is WordPad, click on that, and notice in WordPad you get a lot more options. You have what's called the ribbon, and I've got two tabs, the Home tab and the View tab. On the Home tab, I can format text a little bit differently or more so than in Notepad. Uh, paragraph formatting, I can add numbered lists, I can insert pictures, do drawings. Again, it's a step above Notepad. And then above that, but that doesn't come with Windows 7, you have to purchase separately, is Microsoft's Word. Let me go ahead and close out, come down, click on the Start button, type in Word. There it is, Microsoft Office Word, click on it, and wow, look at how many more features you get here. Just on the ribbon alone, on the Home tab, you got quite a slew of them. And then you have additional tabs here that you can see the many additional features and options that you have. You can do more automation, you can do mail merge, where you can go ahead and type in a letter, and you can add people from your database, and it'll pull in their names, so the letter will always be the same except for their names. In other words, it'll save you time and a lot of work. And you can also print off envelopes, do mass mailings, things like that. Also, you can do labels, you can print the addresses on envelopes, a lot of cool things like that. But for this training video, we're going to cover WordPad, and we'll go over the basics in WordPad. Let me go ahead and close out of Word, come down below, click on the Start button, and since I opened up WordPad, or I frequently open it up, it's in my Start menu, click on it, opens back up. Now we're going to go ahead and cover some of the basics of a document here. We won't cover everything, but if you want to learn more, you can watch my Word training videos. Granted that the Word training videos is geared for the Word program, but you can still learn a lot and implement some of those features from Word into WordPad. First of all, in the upper left hand corner you got the little icon of WordPad, so you can look at that and go, oh I'm in the WordPad program, or over to the right, it gives us the generic name, it's called the document, until I save it and give it an actual name, but it still says WordPad there. And then all of these buttons in between, or the Save button and the Print Preview button, and this redo and undo buttons that aren't highlighted yet but when we start working through our programs they'll become activated because when you make a mistake you want to undo it click on the undo arrow if you want to redo what you undid click on redo In any case these are commands that are on the quick access toolbar the reason why it's called that is because you can quickly access this toolbar and click on the corresponding buttons or commands if you want to be able to add more commands to the toolbar you can do it by coming over here and clicking on the drop down arrow you can see those commands that are already on it are checked. If you want to add more, like the Quick Print, click on it, and there's the Quick Print. Once you click on it, it goes right to your printer. It doesn't bring up the little print option that says, okay, how many pages do you want to print? What pages do you want to print? It just zings it right to your printer. And then, of course, if you want to remove it, come over here and right-click on the button and say Remove from the Quick Access Toolbar. It's still available down below, but it just hides it, okay? Quick Print's still there. Let me click off in a blank area. Now, in previous versions of WordPad that you had in Windows Vista, Windows XP, you had a menu bar. Well, the menu bar has been done away with in favor of what's called the ribbon here, which is one long stretch of ribbon. And on the ribbon, you've got, well, three tabs here. The first tab, when you click on it, acts just like a menu. It opens up. It allows us to go ahead and create a new Word document, a blank document, to open up other documents, to save them, to print them. Okay, so you get your menu option there. Let me click off in a blank area. Then you have the Home tab that has different groups like the clipboard group, the font group, and within the font group you have your bold, italics, underline. So you can select your text, your font, make it bold, pretty, fancy, different colors, and all the other groups here. And then you can go to the next tab on the ribbon and be able to see what you have available there. But I'm going to go back to the Home. And the reason why that they have the ribbon and not those menus anymore or those toolbars 
is that Microsoft was finding that people weren't using the full functionality because they couldn't find them because they were hidden behind menus or other toolbars where everything's displayed out in the open you're probably going to use it especially if the icons look pretty and you want to find out more about it you can hover over it and it gives you a little prompt that says hey this is a subscript and that's a super duper script okay let me click off now the ribbon here is not customizable you can't add or remove buttons on the ribbon as we went over you can add and remove buttons from the quick access toolbar and if the ribbon is in your way and you want to be able to hide it like this huge block here just come up here and double click really fast on one of the tabs double click on home it collapses it if you want to bring it back go ahead and click on it once it brings it up to your thing click off in a blank area and it collapses again of course you can double click on it to bring it back up permanently and your shortcut keys is control holding down CTRL and hitting F1 control F1 okay enough messing around let's go ahead and learn how to type in a letter or some text and be able to save our document when we're finished so let's go ahead and type it to the person that we're going to be addressing now when you're typing your text if you make a mistake you can always hit the backspace arrow on the keyboard and then go ahead and type in what you need to type and notice how the text that I'm typing has these big spaces in between each paragraph where every time I hit the enter key in other words WordPad or Microsoft Word don't look at paragraphs as we learned in our English class which is three or four sentences every time we hit the enter key on the keyboard WordPad sees it as a new paragraph and when I click and drag with my I beam and I select it see how it selects that extra space down below the paragraph has stretched or expanded and so if I don't want double spacing or an extra space between my lines then what you can do is you can go ahead and click and drag and when I say click and drag you've got your I beam here click before the first letter in your text here and then when you click it and you drag you can go ahead and select as you continue to hold your left mouse button down all of the text now you want to be careful because let me click off in a blank area if I begin to click and drag and I go whoops I made a mistake and I click and drag back you see how I can actually move text around if I click and drag on top of the text that's already highlighted so you see the text is highlighted there if I click and drag that highlighted text to move it down here it actually moves it well congratulations now you know how to move text around within your document let me come up here and hit undo a couple of times so when you click and drag to select something and you didn't get it all click off in a blank area start over again okay don't continue on going let's see I selected that part of it Oh, let me come back up here and click and drag oh see I moved it down there and it's hari now and anyways hit the undo arrow so you can undo the mistake that you did you can come over here though and notice in the margin how my pointer turns inwards if you click in the margin it will select everything over to the right within that line if you hold your left mouse button down and you drag down it selects the corresponding lines or the consecutive lines below again all this you can learn and so much more in my word training videos but in any case I just want to be able to select my text and say the text that I have selected I don't want these extra spaces so if I come up here on the home tab in the paragraph group and hover over this button here line spacing click on the drop down arrow and say that you don't want line spacing to be 1.15 select 1 click on it again and it wants to add 10 points of spacing after each paragraph Again, every time you hit the enter key on the keyboard, WordPad sees that as a paragraph or something separate. So that's why it's saying I'm going to go ahead and add 10 points after every time you hit enter on the keyboard, or every time I see an enter, that means it's a new paragraph, and I don't want additional spacing, so I'll uncheck it, and that collapses. I don't have extra spacing. I like it. So I'll go ahead and hit enter a couple of times, and address them. Enter a couple of times. Oops if I made a spelling error that's one thing that WordPad doesn't have here but Microsoft Word does it'll actually create a little squiggly line underneath the misspelled word so it highlights it so you can go oh it's not when add it's wand in any case you get more for your money if you buy Word if it helps when it comes to correcting your spelling otherwise you want to keep a sharp eye on it here when I'm finished with creating my document I can of course go ahead and print it off by coming up here and clicking on the uh, WordPad menu or drop down arrow and it gives me a menu of options come down here I can either click on print or hover over this and the arrow opens up another sub menu 
so I can do a print. When I do a print, it doesn't go right to my printer. It gives me options to say, do you want to print all pages, a few of the pages, select that and say it's just um, page 5 and 12. It gives you an example, 5-12 or 5 through 12, and then click print. Click cancel. If I want to go ahead and save it for later use, then of course come up here on the quick access toolbar. You can see the little save button. When you hover over it, it's got the shortcut key, control S. So you can hit that on your keyboard and then it will save it. Or you can click on the WordPad menu option, come down here, click Save. Now anytime you click Save for the first time, it does what's called the Save As. In other words, WordPad wants to know where do you want to save this document and what's the name going to be. So here's my where in the navigation pane, and right now it wants to save it to documents in the libraries, which I'd rather save it on my desktop. And then down below, what's the name of it? Well, this is going to be Harry. And down below, it wants to save it as rich text formatting, which means that it's not just plain text. I can actually format the text, which I'll show you in a, another training video here. But for right now, that's the name of WordPad, or the association to WordPad is an RTF, or rich text format. And click Save, and that's it. Now, if I come in here after I save it to my desktop, you can see up on the title bar, instead of just the generic document name, it now has a name, so it knows its name. So when I click Save many, many times, it doesn't ask those questions again, like where am I supposed to be saved and what's my name? It only does that the first time. So I can come up here and change the address, click Save. Again, it knows now where to save it and what the name is. Now that I'm done, let's go ahead and close out of here. And I saved it to my desktop. Now, here's something interesting. You'll notice that it's Harry Plopper, and there's the extension of the name RTF, as we talked about in my extension training videos. If not, you want to watch that. But if I go ahead and I double click and open this up, because I have Microsoft Word on my computer, in addition to WordPad and Notepad, it's going to open it up in Word and not in WordPad. But on your computer, if you don't have Word and you double click on this, it'll open up in WordPad. Well, not only that, but your icon won't look like the Microsoft Word program with the blue W. It'll actually let me click on the Start button. Look like that right there, okay? So let me click off in a blank area. So for me to open this up in WordPad, I have to right click on it, go down to Open With, and go over to WordPad. For you, you just have to double click. Unless, of course, you're like me and you have also Microsoft Word on your computer. Once I open it up, if I'm going to address this letter to somebody else, maybe at the same address or a different address or just a different name, then I can come up here, just change the name. Now, if I come up here and I click on the Save button, I'm going to have the name of the file, Harry Plopper, but addressed to somebody else. If I want this as a separate document, then I have to do what's called the Save As. In other words, I want to save this as another document. So I still have my original, but this will be a separate document addressed to one. So come up here and click on the WordPad drop-down arrow, go down, and you can hover over Save As, and it gives you additional options. You can save this document as, rich text, um, document, um, plain text. I'm just going to click on Save As, opens it up. You get the same options when you click on the Save As Type arrow. Again, text document, but I'm going to stay with rich text format. Now, I don't want to leave the name Harry Plopper because I already have it here, and if I save it, it'll overwrite it, and it's supposed to be addressed to Ron Wassel or Wassel. So I'll come down here and type in Ronnie. I think that's right here. Let me move it out of the way, Wassel, and then click Save. Now I have two separate documents. Notice up in the title bar, it's now Ron. So when I close out, look at my desktop, because I did a Save As, I saved this document as another document with another name or a different name. It didn't overwrite the original, so I have two separate documents. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.